Y'all, we set we try to set them up for greatness every single time a round starts. Um, and I, I mean, he showed up today. Hey guys, this is Pedro back with another interview covering VCT America Stage 2. For this occasion, I'm here accompanied by Derek of Evil Geniuses, who are coming off of a victory over Loud in said competition. So, um, Derek, like I said before, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Congrats on starting off on the right foot with a W over Loud. Just starting off with that, you know, the, what, what's the feeling like for you um, after going through a series like that? Feeling pretty good. I mean, loud, super strong team. Um, obviously, uh, they have world champs back. I mean, Pakata's back. They were shooting very well. Uh, map one, we can get anything going. Well, individually for myself, I can get anything going. But yeah, I think starting off hot is very important for a team like us. Um, and hope we can carry the momentum moving into the next games. Yeah, it definitely was a pretty critical. Um, series from the jump for you guys, you know, starting off with a, I believe, two and three record, similar to a lot of you, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong there. So that's Bye. it. What was it? Yeah. Right, thank you so much. Um, what was the team's preparation like in anticipation of this uh, initial encounter for the stage? Because I know you mentioned a little bit about how you kind of were taking a, a a little bit of a view on Sadak on playing duelist, so you kind of had an idea about that, but more so just outside of that, you know, what, what was what was the pressure pre pre preparation like for Loud? I don't think we prepared any differently like we would for any other team. We heard, well, I mean, I played against him in rank playing Neon. I've, we all saw that he was playing nothing but Neon, so we anticipated that. All right, you know, I mean, before they implemented Phoenix uh or split one they were playing everything they were playing phoenix like uh like almost every game too so we can only assume that he's actually playing neon so we prepared for the neon um i will say he's more than capable of playing neon he was very good like he knew when to take space and i think he had that like just that igl mentality where like even if he dies he's essentially calling what he's going to do. He's leaving. He's like the tip of the spear. And then even if he dies, he can tell like where ev everyone what to do um, afterwards. So was that like the, the biggest obstacle that the team kind of encountered as the series went along from map one all the way to map three was there, or were there other factors that played into just how uh, difficult it was for, for you guys to come out on top? I think it was a matter of um, warming up into the series. Like I said, they were just they were hitting some nasty shots. Uh, kind of punch us in the face first map, um, and then you know after after we started rolling them back on sunset and getting some confidence on our side, uh, I think it, it was just a matter of winning the macro, pulling the rotations on nice box, and um, it helps when Jaws like plus like seventeen and first kill first death. So. Shout out to that guy. I can, I can just tell you right now, like I'm looking at over at the stats, it's 21 first kills and three first deaths. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. it, Great, incre I incredible ratio. Just talking about that, then just looking at Jaw playing the ISO, playing the neon. There's uh, there's plenty of times where the broadcast captured him um, doing the ultimate on basically every single uh, member of Loud. Just sort of talk to me about how much of a uh, of a crucial factor was Jagamos performance and just how the series just kind of decided uh, uh ultimately yeah i mean listen that i hate to say it but we all we set we try to set them up for greatness every single time a round starts um and i i mean he showed up today uh obviously we have protocols set in motion where if Maybe he's not feeling it, or he didn't get the first initial pick. We have protocols to deal with that, but uh, it definitely helps when you know he's feeling it, and we're throwing supporting util even after he gets the first kill. Um, I think I think also ISO as an agent and Neon, but ISO is more specifically talking about the ults. I think he's very smart about how he ults. Um, we had maybe one or two misplays just because of miscoms or just not coming in general. Um, but 
pretty smart with ISO and I mean having that shield without having to do anything is like disgusting. So giving that to him is just super calm. confidence is at an all time high, I should say. Yeah, for sure. I, I can also say the same thing about you in particular because you know you performed as the, the best player within your team in that icebox um, rating, and then also KD wise. Just sort of talk yeah. to me about your performance on that final map and how do you viewed your, your how do you viewed the team's um, superiority ultimately uh, in icebox from your point of view. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I'm happy I played well, but I, again, shout out to the team. You know, uh, I rarely, if ever, take first engagements. I'm I'm the guy that's just baiting, uh, baiting jaw, baiting everyone. Um, so I will say, stats wise, I'm happy I did well, but I think they expect that of me if um, I'm not taking any first engagements. My ults were a little rough today, besides like one or two, and yeah, shout out to Apoth, that guy's using the bomb twenty four seven and just not being able to play the game. So. Tell it to you. Wasn't it wasn't it Apoff or Nature that kind of pulled off that clutch um, diffuse? I believe it was in early on in Icebox. Well, I, I'm not sure if, if that was it. It was uh, it was Nature. He just we well Apoff got it to half, and then Nature just full stuck it. We were just like he's 30 HP. There's no way he's gonna win it. Um, and they just I guess they didn't know it was half or there was a miscom because I don't think they spammed it. And then Les threw like a molly, and it was like super late, and we just won the round out. We were just like so confused, but got to roll with it. Yeah, I mean, it really was something because because I, I kind of assumed that Loud kind of had kind of had an idea as to you know um, nature putting the diffuse instead they'll probably pick him up, but it didn't really happen. It was only literally after the literal nanosecond after he pulled off the diffuse that. Um, he was pulled, killed by, by the Molly. Uh, just sort of, uh, it's Valorant, you know, just how it is, Valorant, Valorant things. Uh, and, um, talking about this result, I mean, it's a continuation, arguably, of just EG's form from the end of stage one. Sure, you guys weren't able to qualify for playoffs, but, it, it, it gave a little bit of a solace due to the fact that you were able to just, uh, win a few games and just, um, build momentum slowly. Bit by bit, piece by piece, from then up until now, and you guys have been able to do that, defeating Loud. I mean, how did the, the, the team kind of rebound, or more so move on from the end of stage one to then preparing and adjusting with the new changes to the game um, for stage two? What, what was that process like? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've said it before, but I, I'll say it again. Uh, I think missing playoffs and like Shanghai was a blessing in disguise for us. I think being able to, especially with the big patch where all the duels got changed and some other nerfs here and there, new map, even coming back. Um, I think it gave us a lot of time to prep for that. Seeing what, what, you know, what us as a team are leaning more into maybe like more ISO, more neon and just being able to play against other teams too, scrimming against other teams playing ISO neon. Um, I think that gave us a big advantage over teams that like went to Shanghai and just had to play catch up. Um, so yeah, I mean, it sucks to miss out on an event like that. But listen, if we make if we make champs, it, it'll all be worth it. So, how much confidence do you feel this result gives to this team? Just knowing that you know you guys are still on winning ways. You guys starting off with a W to this stage, and now you could kind of build forward to you know your next opponents because your next opponents are going to be uh fury and leviathan pretty uh formidable teams in their own right for you of course coming off of that win over 100 thieves and then leviathan you know coming off of that masters shanghai appearance so uh, how much how important is it to just start off this with a w over loud i think it's super important uh for like a team a newer team like us uh just knowing that we can we're still maintaining that form at the end of split one and carrying that momentum forward is super important. Uh, and yeah, I just I hope. Well, we're, we're gonna we're gonna take an off day tomorrow, but we're gonna go right back into it. And anticipating the ISO nerfs, we're definitely gonna have to work around some things, and we'll see. 
Yeah, we'll see in the yeah. end. Talking about, of course, the, the, mm-hmm. those opponents, aforementioned opponents, Fury and Leviathan. Just sort of walk me through your impressions of just those two teams. You know, on the surface level, because of course, you know, you, you're, you're just literally coming off of this result against Loud. For sure. Uh, I think Fury looks super, actually very drilled today. We had a lot of protocols. I was actually, we were watching the match backstage and we are like, wow, they're like playing super well, pulling rotation, inserting, and just like playing the macro very well. Uh, I I actually expected 100T to win that pretty. I wouldn't say that I. I wouldn't say in a dominant way, but I expected 100T to come out of that, regardless. If, even if it went to map three, um, but yeah, I think uh, who I think NZR is playing super good. Zan looks pretty. They, they they look they look pretty, pretty drilled and meshing super well. Leviathan, uh. I mean, you always got to be scared of Leviathan, Aspas, King. Is they're they're just the goats, um, but you know I think that's just a team where as long as you're as long as you're coming into the game confident and, and you're shutting down their star players and and leaving it up to you know um, the others. I think I think it's a I think it'll be a very close match. Um, one more question. I'm going to try to make it short. Um, what is the one thing that you feel the team has to address the most in anticipation of these two um, opponents in Super Week? Address the most, as in like problems wise, or just like approach, approach problem wise. You know, so um, I think the biggest thing is with now the ISO nerf coming into next week for Super Week, we're just gonna have to come back to the drawing board and see and ask ourselves, you know, is ISO still worth playing? Or should we let Jaw decide to just run Neon every map? Um, we still haven't figured that out as a team. Obviously, we played and scrimmed him on pretty much every duels on every map. Uh, so yeah, at the clove, the clo- there's also a clove nerf, which kind of messes with our comps too. But um, yeah, I think comps is definitely a thing we're going to have to talk about. Of course, of course. Uh, whatever the case may be, we'll be sure to see what Evil Geniuses throws upon uh, their respective opponents in, in the future. So that's it. I'm going to wrap up the interview right here. Um, Derek, thank you so much for taking the time for another interview. Really do pre- appreciate it. And of course, best of luck goes to you for the future. Thank you, Pedro. Have a good night.